Hi there and welcome back to my channel. This is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're talking about Bad Moon Rising, written by Louisa Colon. And I don't know if I pronounced her surname correctly. I hope I have. If I haven't, forgive me. But this book is interesting. It's a horror. It's very atmospheric, almost gothic in nature. And it's very character-driven as well, this story. It almost feels like a horror mystery in a way. If it is a genre, I'm not sure, but it feels like a horror mystery, the way it plays out in the story. It's very slow burn. It's not a book that actually grabs you instantly. It didn't for me anyway, but if you persist with it, it will grab you. It's one of those books that slowly hooks you in. And it's that slow burn element and also character-driven element in this story. Those characters drag you into the story eventually, and once you're there, you can't get out. It's very well told, even though it's very short, it's well told. I think sometimes that sparse detail in the book works, but I also think sometimes I want a more detail there. But then I wonder if there's more detail, will it ruin that character element in the story? You know, it's one of those books where it feels incomplete in some ways, but then it's also very well told and well written, and you do think it's complete. So I'm confused by that. I did enjoy it, but I just don't know if I want more detail or not. But that atmosphere, that horror atmosphere, the gothic atmosphere in the story is so well done, very character driven, and those characters are quite complex and you will get hooked into them in the story. So the story is structured in split narrative with one in the past in the present, and it's centered around two characters mainly. One character in the past, one character in the present. So I didn't mind that actually because there's two characters in those two narratives so it feels like two different stories in the book actually even though they're interjoined there's you know there's links between those two narratives eventually in the story i did enjoy that split narrative in this book one of the characters in this book is elodia and she's in the present day narrative i enjoyed her character a lot she feels so real as a character i enjoyed her character because in the present day she thinks about some big event in her past, but there's no you know, flashbacks going on in her narrative. It's in her thoughts. It's in her point of view. It's in the way people look at her and talk to her that triggers thoughts of the past. And they're just brief thoughts, brief snippets in her narrative. And I enjoyed that, the way the authors tie that in to the present day narrative and makes her feel real because it makes her feel like she's going through her present day life and just thinking about how the past impacts who she is now. And there's questions about her because of that. You, know, you wonder, why is she wondering what people think of her when they look at her or when they talk to her? What is making her just feel different to how she used to feel? What about her makes her just feel like she doesn't belong with other people? When she talks, she talks quietly, very reserved. She's very emotive. Her emotions run very strongly in her narrative and they feel so much a part of her. They control her in a way in her narrative as well. So she drives that narrative very strongly in what she sees, and how she perceives the world and how she perceives other people when they're interacting with her. It's a big part of the character and also becomes a big part of the story because it's so important to the character. It's important to the reader as well. Gabriel as a character in his past narrative is very intense as a character almost very aggressive, very angry as a character as well. It makes him sometimes hard to pin down, even though you understand why he is that way. Sometimes his character is a bit harder to pin down than Elodie's, but his narrative is very high volume. If I want to think of it as in hearing something, you know, the loudness of something, his narrative is very high volume, very loud gets in your skull, you know, that kind of volume that gets in your skull and it hurts. That's what his narrative feels like. And it's written in that way for a reason. It's because his character is like that. His character is angry, aggressive, very emotional as well. But also sometimes that that anger and aggression, the way it's portrayed in his narrative, almost makes him feel one-dimensional sometimes. But then, in other times, he feels very complex and complete. So he's a mixed bag as a character. Written very well for some parts, but I just wonder if sometimes there wasn't enough care taken with him. But with Elodia, there was a lot of care with her character. So they're very different as characters. There's great contrast with them. But when the book progresses, you see how those characters merge towards 
towards the end of the book. When they emerge, they become something different, almost unique as characters, and they feel like they feel like two characters still, but they feel like, in a way, two halves of something when they do merge. But the story itself, I mean, you have to read it to really understand the story. The story is all about causation, about how the past impacts the future, indirectly or directly. That's what the story is about, and it's very slow burn. It is psychological a lot in the book. It's got an atmosphere that's gothic. There's a lot of stuff going on in this story. But it is about causation. And in this book, the things that happen in the past do really impact the future and the present. So I do like that in this story. It's well told. It's consistent. Those themes, those concepts hold true all through the book. The writing style of this book reminds me a lot of Atessa Moshfair. When I was reading this, I could imagine Atessa Moshfair writing this book. Just the things that happen. The scenarios, the settings, the way things are described, the characters. It just feels like that to me. It feels like Moshfair wrote this story. And I do like that because I don't mind books that are kind of genre blending or even literary genre that kind of blend between the two. It happens a lot now, I think, more than it used to. But in this book, it works. This book does not rely on shock horror, on you know, jump horror, doesn't rely on that, it relies on atmospheric horror, it relies on character driven horror in some cases, and relies on this whole concept of, you know, the past, you know, that chilling past that may impact the future. You get that feel in this story. And that past in this book is really powerful. It is chilling sometimes, but it's very gripping. And when it does impact the present in the story, it makes that present just very engaging, very strong, and sometimes very chilling as well. I mean, it kind of bleeds into the present from the past. That's what I felt like in this book. Elodia is a captivating character, even enthralling, and it's just the way she's created, the way she's told in the story, and also her point of view. Sometimes she feels very vulnerable, very shy. Other times she feels very hyper-emotive and pushing people away and very strong sometimes as well. So she's very complex as a character. But just her voice in the book just drags you in. You can't help but engage with Elodia in this book. She feels very real. She feels like a teenager and she is in the story. And she feels very real as a teenager. So not all authors can create teenage characters that feel very real. But this author manages to do that. I think Elodia stands out as a great teenage character in this story. So Gabriel, even though Gabriel is written very well sometimes in this story, there's something about this hyper-aggressive nature of his that almost makes him feel one-dimensional sometimes. And that's a bit of a risk, I think, you know, with characters sometimes making them hyper-something. Can make that part of that character kind of overshadow everything else. That happens with Gabriel sometimes in this story. But at other times, he's very gripping. He's quite chilling as a character. I mean, that's down to his plot and where he's thrust into different settings and scenarios. That's very chilling. And that creates him as a chilling character as well. And it makes you wonder about him with a link with the past and present, how it impacts his present. So I do like Gabriel as a character, not so much as I like Elodia, but both characters, I think, are very well told in this story. I did enjoy this read overall. If you like atmospheric horror that's gothic in nature, I think you'll enjoy this book. I mean, it's a horror that's character-driven. It's almost a horror mystery in some ways, but it's very character-driven and it relies on atmosphere. It relies on point of view more than kind of jump scares and, and gory things happening in the story. It almost feels unique in a way. And I'm trying to pin it into some sort of a genre of horror, but I just can't. It just feels atmospheric, slightly gothic, a bit of a mystery, a bit of a slow burn. There's all elements playing in this story. But I did enjoy it, and I do rate it a 3 out of 5. I'd be interested to see what this author writes next. I think it's a debut book for the author, but I think it shows the author can write well. The author can develop characters well, and voice as well in the story as well, and also make characters feel real. Not all the time in the story, but Elodia especially feels very real in this book. On my channel, I review many horrors. If you enjoy horror, check out my channel and subscribe. On the screen now is a link to a video for another book I'm sure you'll enjoy.